Uh, we'll open the Board of Health meeting at 6.07. Uh, this is a Sunderland Board of Health meeting, remote participation, Monday, September 21st, 2020. As I said, uh, meeting was opened at 6.07 p.m. If I could get a motion to open the meeting. Motion so moved. Thank you. Uh, and the second, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Uh, unanimous. Um, the uh, agenda today, oh, present uh, at the Board of uh, Health meeting is, we do have a quorum. We have Bruce Bennett, Ken Kushai, and Caitlin Rock. We also have uh, Health Inspector Stephen Ball. We also have the Administrator, uh, Cindy Bennett. Um, if uh, at, sent out in our packets was the uh, meeting minutes for August 24th. In that meeting, we had an appointment. Ken O'Neill, the owner of the O's. I did get a chance to look at them briefly. I did not see any problem. Neither, neither did I. Um, Bruce, did you uh, have any issue with it? You're muted. I think I can. No, no problems. Okay, great. Uh, can I have a motion? Just because I'm chair, I don't. Uh, motion. Up the meeting, oh. the minutes of the last meeting. Okay, I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, three zero. Thank you very much. Um, tonight's meeting, um, old business. We're reviewing the Board of Health fees. So um, thankfully, Cindy, as always, put in our fees, current fees. Um, and uh, we also um, received a sheet which gave us uh, the surrounding towns and what they charged. And as I mentioned um, for Bruce, I, I, it's been years since we've raised our fees. Right, right. right. So. 2009 was the last time we raised fees. Okay, 2009. So um, I think it's it's probably time. <laughs> Definitely, our costs have gone up. We, you know, we haven't even upgraded our own equipment um, for our inspectors or anything like that. Um, so I think I think it's a good time. Um, the inspection fees seem to hover. Did uh, does anyone have any? We'll have a dis we're open to open to discussion. Yep. What, what, did, uh, I, go well, ahead. Go yeah. ahead, Bruce. No, you go ahead. Uh, I was just going to say that um, when I when I looked at the fees, uh, what, what the new fees and what the other surrounding towns were, in some spots we we're all comparable with each other, and in some spots where uh, we charged and other towns didn't, and I think. They're, to me, they look good. Okay. Um, Hatfield, Hatfield charges for the uh, septic plan review. Um, I, I don't know, Deerfield does not charge for the plan review. Um, I, I, I have a that's the hard part about getting the fees together is a lot of towns don't do it exactly the same way. Some call things a little differently. I think in Deerfield, I'm trying to look for my minutes uh, of my packet. <laughs> I think um, Deerfield couples theirs together with the other components of a review for septics, say. Oh, okay. If I remember correctly. Mm -hmm. um, so that's, you know, that's what made it a little bit more difficult trying to compare all of these. Because if you look, I mean, Sept um, Deerfield doesn't charge anything is what it would say. 
So, and we know that's not true. But they must have a fee, fee set up for something else that covers all of that as a whole. That's what Cindy's saying, yeah. Right. So we yep. can't um, compare. So our um, septic plan review, it's 100, 150, which 150 plus final is Hadley. No, I'm sorry. Hatfield. Hadley charges $250 for a perk test. So, mm -hmm. yeah, it's interesting. It's, it's very hard to compare. Exactly. Did you come up with a suggested fee, Cindy, a recommended fee? No. Where do you see okay. that? There's our fees, which we're currently charging, which is first, and then all those other yeah. fees I just looked up on their websites. So our the fee that we have is is this schedule, is schedule Correct. right here. Correct. And I don't know if you have that, but it's a schedule of our yeah, current. Exactly. That's our um, fee schedule. So I just changed the format over the past few months. Currently, an installer's permit is a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. um, then we have like the plan reviews a hundred, a plan review resubmissions fifty, a final inspections a hundred, a reinspection would be fifty, perk test is one hundred and seventy five. Title five inspections, 100. Subdivision plan reviews, 200. And a resubmission plan review, I would assume on the subdivision, is 100. Um, a septic installer is $100. Solid waste hauler permits, $200. Disposal work permit, 150. What's, what's the total revenue that we generate from our fees? <laughs> we don't know? Well, off the top of our heads, we're only allowed to spend 16,500. Oh, yep. Yeah, 16,500 um, out of the Board of Health revolving account. We do exceed that with our income, but it just kind of hangs out in the bank, so to speak. I know a couple of times the auditors uh, recommended that that be zeroed out and turned over to the town, which has happened a couple of times over the years that I've been here. We're probably a, around 20,000 or so. It, it's, a, it's a rolling number because you can run numbers for a fiscal year versus a calendar year, which I have to do for all sorts of things. So um, for this year, let me get on my little spreadsheet here. I've been keeping since 2005. <laughs> I'm so nervous I'm gonna lose it one of these days. Um, and I can tell you what our numbers have been. Um, I can also offer over the years, we've been using it for more things than we used to. Um, Public health nursing is a big item. So, uh, and we have exceeded our amounts due to that. Oh wait, I can't. Um, they pay for some of my salary. They pay for Gina's salary, you know, all that sort of thing. There mm -hmm. are some expenses that are paid out of there. It's opening. So do we, so do we generally as a board of health operate in the black every year? Yeah. We're operating in the red. No, we're always in the in the black. No, in the black. Yeah, for sure. We we come up to it depending on usually the public health nursing. That is the only thing we have that we um, can't control. Kind of, we can't budget for. Depending upon what um, happens. Right. And that we've had to ask for money uh, probably two years ago 
we had kind of a, a flurry of public health nursing costs. This time, we would definitely be asking for the pandemic if we didn't get the grant money. But we received a cup, 3,000, I think, in grant 3, money. 3,500. 3,500. And we're also putting in for the um, CARES reimbursement. Right. So um, I've turned over all of her expenses up to June 30. So if we don't, you know, that, that will push us past our limit. You know, public health nursing will do it for us. Um, but without that, we're in the black. Our, our expenses right cover. And the problem is, is if we're too much in the black, the town wants to take our money. Right. So <laughs> we got I, I, I don't think as a board, we should be looking to make a profit. And give no, a no, 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 no. <laughs> and we never do. So, we, we so don't. maybe we should just leave the fees the way they are and, you know, see what happens. We, yes. We, we, every, like I said, we did this in 2009. And what we do is we, we, do, we have this discussion yep. every few oh, years. Yep, yep. I don't, you know, we don't make it. You, me, and Ken make nothing. <laughs> you know. Um, put it for something. <laughs> yeah. Well, do you want to, Tom has mentioned, me. <laughs> Tom has mentioned that several times tom find a yeah um i think we are one of the only unpaid boards um but you know it does give us the uh it does give us the uh, br complaining rights um you know because <laughs> and, i mean what do we put in for 500 each the, the, you know i mean it, we can discuss this uh, i have no problem with you know yep. We can definitely put in for our stipend. Um, this year, <laughs> I have been working almost daily. Um, but in the past years, you know, we really, we meet once a month. It's really, and you know, I, I don't have too much of a problem, but we are, uh, we are one of the only unpaid boards. Can, 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 I make, mm -hmm. can I make a suggestion that we leave the fees as they are? Sure. And then when we go through the next budget cycle, we can address our revenue stream and our expense stream again for a new budget to put for forth in the coming year. Sure. And then that Absolutely. way we could look at it and if there's an increase in our costs, then we could increase our fees accordingly. I think and, that's a fair and, and that would be a fair way of doing things. Yeah. And the town, the town does pay for Steve's salary, except any percent over 2%, which last year was 1% over, which is $4 a, uh, a pay period. And then there's about, I think it's a $3,500 or so expense account afforded to the Board of Health, which Steve uses for pool supplies and all that sort of thing. And we rarely mm -hmm. use it all if he needs to go to meetings and things like that. For um, you know, professional conferences. So as yeah, of right Boston, now, but yeah, we don't for right. it down. No, no, we don't. But since July, we have thirty-two hundred dollars we brought in, and since December, it's seventy-six sixty. And you got to figure it's COVID. So there's a lot of stuff that hasn't been happening because of it. Right. Mm -hmm. So. And it was over eleven, twelve thousand dollars that we brought in since last July, and again, COVID. So we're pretty good about bringing our money in. Um, we have a lot of things in place. People know now that um, if you don't pay me for a service, my agent doesn't show up. <laughs> that's my that's my reputation out there, and you know, right, it's just the way it's it not is. The way it used to be. No, and you know, people sell houses. You need to pay me for your title five before we show up because then they don't pay. They, they never sell their pay. house and they move away and they never pay. So yeah. um, that's one of the big things. We relaxed some of the fees for our restaurants this year during COVID. A lot of that inspection fees and some of that, you know, because they weren't open and stuff like that. Um, we have all that coming up for the end of year for their license renewals. So that'll all be coming in. Um, so there's a lot of variables that this year makes it a little different than usual, but um, yeah. we we do pretty good and we have an extremely low non-collection rate. 
So, but everybody knows if, if you don't pay, our agents don't go. And I and do it's think, just as simple as that. I think it is important that we, you know, our businesses in town are not, are really, are struggling. So if that means, you know, lowering that $150 fee or something like that, and we're able to do it, then this is the time we do it. You know, that's the kind of stuff that we, we try to do. Yep. You know, do you agree, Bruce? Because, I mean, this is your yeah, money, that's too. Fine. That's fine with me. Yeah. Yeah, the I fine just... line we're working right now is um, some of these expenses that the Board of Health absorbs, the town's going to continue to make the Board of Health pay for those expenses. Um, and this might be a good segue to just jump in. You know, we are getting two laptops. Um, that's been confirmed. I've been working with the town administrator for our two agents for the field. So, for example, if they want to have a wireless connection, you know, we have to take get some kind of mechanism that way. That would be expected to be coming out of the Board of Health expense account. So, those kinds of things are those additional things that keep coming up now. You know, my salary for Board of Health has been completely removed from the town side and is now completely on the Board of Health revolving as well. So um, those are a couple extra things. I'm just looking at the fees now. Yeah. I, most of the fees I think are pretty aligned with what ours are. I don't yeah, think we're really out of similar. line. They, they did seem, I was a little surprised. I, I know the last time we raised them, they weren't so similar, but they right. seem to be now. I think we got in line. Yeah. And some of the towns that are different, their situations are very different than ours. We don't have a lot of bed and breakfasts and, you know, hotels and all that sort of thing. So that brings in a different layer for them that we just don't have. Yeah which would probably generate more salary for our agents and all that sort of thing. We just don't have those requirements. Do, for, well, Cindy, I'm gonna ask you a question. Does anybody in town know how many bed and breakfasts we do have in town? Yeah, well, I think we have none right now. We used to have one, um, but that's no longer in operation. So we have zero. Ah. By the same token, sometimes we're called in to um, inspect for labor camps, certain Section 8 housings, uh, mm -hmm. pre-move-in, those kinds of things. But again, that's a direct cost. You know, it's $100 for a housing inspection, and they pay $100 for our agent to go out there and do that. Uh-huh. Well, thank you. All right. So then I would say on the... Um, on the uh, old business reviewing of the Board of Health fees, I mean, we weren't looking because we weren't making a, a motion. Um, you know, we had the discussion and I think it's, we're gonna keep it the way it is. Is that yeah, what everybody thinks? Yep. Okay. Uh, okay, I'll make a motion to well, accept well, them the think... way they are. Okay. Oh, wait a minute. I, no, that's okay. I just don't, I don't think we had it up for a, a vote to, because we, we were reviewing so oh, why okay, don't we I see. put it back on, you know, Cindy, if you can just put it on your watch list. If, if you notice that the town is putting more onto us, <laughs> you know, I know they slid over the salaries, they slid over, you know, uh, equipment, we can handle it. Um, you know, I don't like putting all of our stuff onto the, then onto the people, onto our residents shoulders so we'll see if we can do it some other way get grants get money somehow and if we can't then we'll maybe revisit the discussions yeah that's fair, that's fair. okay great yeah, yeah um, i agree great so then just so you know i'm yeah. sorry no we no. aren't i do not believe the board of health is not being charged for these two laptops oh great terrific okay. yay <laughs> All right, so that's it. So that takes care of both the um, Board of Health fees and the laptops. Good. Um, new business, um, the Housing Health Agent Update. Uh, so she didn't send one and she's not here. So we'll skip that for now. 
health agent update. Hey, Steve. Hey, how you doing? Oh, peachy. Good. What's up? Uh, not much. It has been um, a little bit slow. The um, I'm just looking for my notes here, which the cat is sitting on. I apologize. Um, <laughs> I can't see it. Oh, oh yeah. Well, here. Wait a second. <laughs> there we go. How's that? There, there's the dip of my camera. <laughs> there's the cat. Yeah. Um, so I've done, uh, uh, I think, four Title V inspections, a couple of final inspections. Uh, I've gotten, I, with some restaurants that want to move in, move inside, for example, Wild Roots has been outside all summer long and they're trying to figure out a plan and I'm, I'm having a great phone now. Uh, we'll catch up probably this week. Um, I've been doing a little bit of work in the office, uh, moving file cap to files in order to get the office set up so that we can have Board of Health meetings in person in the office and with a, a uh, barrier similar to what's in the uh, Cindy's office. So for people who want to come in to the office, uh, I'm struggling a little bit with food inspections, doing food inspections, and with COVID, I uh, I'm not quite sure how to handle that. There doesn't appear to be any guidance on the Mass D Department of Public Health website food protection program about um, what's necessary, what precautions to take. So. Um, I think that I'll start doing them. Steve, this week. could yes. you pull your microphone away from your face? Yeah. You just you're blowing wind into it while you're talking. Oh, I'm sorry. That's not That's supposed okay. to happen. I bought Thank this you. fancy microphone with automatic noise canceling. I just got ripped off. Nope. Now you're perfect. Oh well, thanks. Well, in that case, the report's done. There you go. <laughs> no, so, oh, is, is it is that why there was skips in between yes. his voices? Yes. <laughs> that could be. Yeah, sorry about that. Thank you. That's okay. Um, so I will, I will try and figure out food inspections and, uh, you know, show up just when the restaurant opens or something like that. So the staff is reduced or show up before they open and maintain social distancing and stuff. I, uh, I'm not real worried. We are very fortunate in town that uh, rarely do I have any kind of food violations these days. Maybe that's the, uh, the goal of being so miserable over the last 20 years that nobody has too many violations, but. That works. Okay. That means you're doing your job, Steve. Mm. Well, anything, uh, any, anything further on the O, Steve? Have you heard anything more from them? Uh, I have not had any contact from anybody at the O's or any representative of the O's. Okay. I haven't seen any work going on. I haven't seen anything. No, no. I, I check every time I go by because you know I like the guy. <laughs> you know, I, I want him to, and he hasn't. I haven't seen anything. Is he, is he open or no? No, no, he had, yeah, but I haven't even seen any, I haven't seen any work going on. I haven't yeah, seen like, yeah. you know, he's supposed to submit a plan and he's supposed to, I, I've seen, there's no workers, there's no nothing. And I drive by pretty often. I haven't even seen a car there, the door open, nothing. So. Neither, neither have I, because I go down by that way quite a bit yeah. myself. Cause I always look because I like them. I, you know, I, I wish him well. Um, the uh, the school's going to need an inspection, Steve, because I know they're doing the lunches and stuff for the kids. Yeah, no problem. I, I'll take care of that. I'll try and get that this week. I know they need two in the school year. So right. Just... Yeah. Um, 
Yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll make sure that gets done just so that they can check it off their list too because I'm sure their COVID, their COVID stuff is ridiculous. And once again, they, they put out something today about, um, I got uh, something as a parent from the superintendent stating that, you know, the Board of Health is the one who decides who, that closing, the closing of the schools. Now, I've been on all of the meetings I've been on all of the the, uh, the collaborative meetings regarding um, you know when to close the school, and uh, it is not a science. It's going to be a you know um, kind of like uh, the famous Supreme Court decision about pornography. I can't define it, but you know it when you see it, <laughs> and uh, that's that's what it's going to be with the. Uh, the closing of the schools they nope. they say they're going to go by the the statistics and the trends but that's not necessarily the way we're going to be doing it because what we are going to be doing is going with what is going on in our community as far as you know if, if we have an uptick of say six cases but through the contact tracing of our public health nurse, you find that it is six people who are all over the age of 50 who all went on a cruise together and they have no relatives in the school district. You know, they're not, and, and they don't touch the school. Well, then we might not be closing the school. Mm -hmm. So, this is going to take research and information rather than just the numbers coming in. You know, even though we might turn to a red community, because if we got six cases, that would flip our statistics absolutely horrendous because we've had zero since May. So that would make us a hot zone. <laughs> but not necessarily because you have to look at the what type of case and what type of positive we have. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's what's more important. Um, and, and so we're going to be in pretty tight contact with the public health nurse, the nurse manager for Frontier Regional, and with the trickle down, it would be the, 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 the four, Boards of Health, the, you know, the superintendent and Frontier, as well as Sunderland Elementary. Um, and so that's kind of the way we're looking at it. I'm going to present that to you guys and, do, you know. So who, who closed the schools last March? Was it the Board of Health or was it? So <laughs> I was in a well, meeting with them. Huge. I was in a meeting with them on the 13th, Friday the 13th, at about 11, uh, maybe noon. And, you know, it was going back and forth um, with, I was with the superintendent and the principal and the other boards of health. Um, and they were like, well, you know, we should probably close for two weeks. And, you know, and I, we were looking at the trends and everything else. And before we even, we had said, all right, we'll close for next week. Well, then, Darius got hit with all the other schools were closing for two weeks. Why is your district not closing for two weeks? So he decided uh, he wanted to close for two weeks. We said, all right, the boards of health got together and said, you know, the entire other school districts were all closing for two weeks. And then that then Charlie Baker came in like four hours later and shut all the schools down. So we hadn't even announced, we hadn't even given them our quote unquote blessing and Charlie Baker closed it. So the way we're talking now is it, re, you know, we have the power to close them, but Charlie Baker's really gonna take that away. What we do have the power though, is if Charlie Baker doesn't close them, we can close them. So that's uh, the, the, executive, the executive branch can do an executive order and and and, and overrule everybody, no matter what, what happens. But he can't open them. Okay. 
You know what I mean? Like we can, if he doesn't he make it. Order, his executive order, but it's still up to the local board to help to open the schools. No, to cl close them. To close them. Right. See, we can say it's not fit. We can say it's the state health and safety. But I don't think that they can overrule us and open them. Now, Steve, okay, okay, you and okay. I can do a yeah. little research, legal research on that. But I think that we have the power to say it's a safety and health hazard. Yep. I have to, you know, I want to, I, I can look that up, but if they say nothing, then we absolutely have the power. Yep. If we don't, and they can close it over us. Do you know what I mean? Like if we don't close it, they will definitely can close it over us. I don't know if they can open it over us. And that's what I need to look up. You know, whether, you know, we, you know, Steve, do you know, like, can the governor open it over our, oh, you're muted. I don't know the answer to that. I'd have to check the, uh, the uh, guidance. I mean, I can't see a situation where they would, especially our governor in our state would do that. We're not in Texas, um, <laughs> you know, or Georgia, but in, uh, you know, in other states, I could see that might happen, but not, not in our state. Um, so, you know, and, and right now we're at the capacity where I think there's a uh, 60% or so going remote anyway. So we don't have a huge percentage of kids in Sunderland Elementary. Start, it started this week, started today. Today was the first day for kids in the school. Um, so, you know, we'll see how it goes. Uh, you know, there's there's betting pools on whether it's going to last two weeks or not. Um, so we'll see. You know, I hope it I hope it goes well. I, you know, I'd I'd like to see the population open up, and I'd like to see them maintain. I want to see it all maintain. They're working so is, yep. hard. Is it optional for the students whether they attend school or they do the remote learning? Yes, the parents could choose. Okay. Yep. Okay. We're at about 60% remote learning now? Remote, yes. Okay. And um, the, the classes are about eight to 10 kids. And they are six, the desks are over six or plus feet separated. Okay. And they also have outdoor classrooms until it gets too cold. Yep. So I mean, yep. they're, we're very fortunate in our area where we are. Um, and the teachers and the staff and the administration are working amazingly hard. <laughs> um, but, you know, I mean, we just, if my kids were in Springfield or someplace a little more, even a little, a, a little more populated, I, I would be nervous, but not here. The, the town surrounding is like, that go to Frontier. Are their cases the same, similar to Sunderland's with a very yep. minimal amount of cases? Yep. Okay. We're, we're all in the 0 0.001 category. And, you know, there's, there's just a trickling of, uh, and they're mostly uh, travelers right. that came back with the case. And they all quarantine. There's nobody that we know of that's rogue, refusing to, you know, quarantine, refusing to do anything. We just, you know, Deerfield had a spat of uh, one family who uh, all went on vacation together. And the youngest was a college age girl in that family. So, and they tested positive and they did their quarantine. And then, you know, so that's what we're at. You know, we're not, we're, and we've been fortunate and we've been fortunate um, and UMass has said they'd be in contact with us and uh, they're testing their students and we have not gotten a positive and they give their Sunderland address now, the off campus. Hmm. 
So it, it seems some colleges are doing a very good job of maintaining and monitoring the students, but there's other schools that aren't doing a good job. So I, I think well, you know, where we are, they're doing a good job. Well, I think the, the residents of Amherst are demanding not, no less. Right. And I think we're benefiting from their very, very watchful eye. Right. No, I, mm -hmm. I, we, should. we should. I mean, it, um, there is yeah. concern about yeah. you know, people coming in from all over. Yep. Um, and they've taken away their long weekends and um, spring break. Right, right. I think that's very important. I think the biggest yeah. mistake they made was sending everybody home yeah. last spring when they should have kept them on campus and locked them down there. Yeah. So, so, so I think, yeah. Um, so we can actually segue into the public health nurses report. Um, actually, I have a question. Oh, absolutely. Uh, one thing on my update is I'm wondering if the board will entertain adopting a policy that septic tanks be pumped at the time of inspection. Uh, I've had a few issues with inspectors lately who think that, uh, that well, in my judgment, the tank doesn't need to pump, be pumped. Um, and there's, there's no teeth. If I think the tank needs to be pumped, I really have no way to uh, uh, deal with that. But if the board adopts a policy that tanks have to be pumped at time of inspection, it saves a couple of issues. One is the pumper will be there at the time of inspection. And two, it saves the inspector from saying, oh, I'm, I will have it done later and I'll be here, which I thought that was already a policy, Steve. Uh, it's not a regulation and it has not been a policy to my knowledge. But hmm. a lot of people have been doing that anyways, right? Yeah, most places will pump it, but uh, there are some inspectors who um, just sort of show up and say, well, I'll get it pumped if it needs it. And uh, I think that's a good policy that we should have. Okay. I'd like to move that we... Um, have a policy of the septic tanks be pumped at the time of inspection. Um, with you as a witness, Steve? Yes, I'm there at the inspection. Right, right. Okay, do we, uh, I'll second that. Uh, um, all in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, three zero. Thank um, you. Does that need to, that's gonna have to go be written. Um, so should that go on to the application form so that they know? I mean, it, it's got to be uh, something that it is uh, in not general knowledge that this has to happen. Right. Because um, it is going to cost a little money. Right. I can tell people at the time I make the appointment and if Cindy can put it on the bill so that when the bill is sent out or somebody comes in to pay, they get a receipt. There's a big in lettering on it that says tanks must be pumped at time of inspection. Okay. We've also in the past, we've sent out something to all the companies that we work with, um, all the installers and, and haulers and whatnot. So everybody knows this is our new policy. Oh, great. And that seems to work too. We had that um, in conjunction with the sewer department also because our haulers are dumping in Sunderland's um, wastewater treatment plant and there's restrictions there. Oh, great. So okay. we can do it that way also to get the word out initially, especially when they sign up for a license. That's okay. usually when I send a, those kinds of things out. Like a little information packet on what we require. Yep. 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 Mm -hmm. Just because I think oh, not good. notice is very important, especially if, you know, because that's the last thing we need is people calling in complaining that we changed a policy and didn't tell anybody. <clears throat> They're going to complain anyway, but you know. But it's an extra expense <laughs> for the homeowner too at the last minute. You know, if they, I think most as of it's going doing, now, I think most of them are doing it anyway. So yeah, yeah, you know, and it's something they should be doing, but you know. I wouldn't want to buy a house if the tank can been pumped. Well, there are some inspectors who uh, say, "Well, I can't, I can't 
uh, definitively determine the condition of the tank without pumping it and other inspectors say, well, the level's fine. It looks good to me. It must be okay. Must be okay. So I would prefer to uh, eliminate the latter group. Mm -hmm. All right. Well, thank you. Thank you. Yep. yep. Yeah, because the, uh, on the baffles, right? Is that in reference to the baffles condition? Well, it can be the baffles. There can be a gas baffle on the outlet T. Uh, there's any number of things that, mm -hmm. you know, you can uh, occasionally find the kid's teddy bear in the bottom. So, <laughs> um, uh, no, no lie. But also there's a huge problem with uh, people who use the wet wipes and flush them. I've seen tanks with two and a half feet of wet wipes on the bottom of them. It's taken the pumper all, all day to do the tank. So it's wow. good that stuff taken out. Yep. Well, thank you, Steve, for that update. You're and welcome. Information. Thank you. So, um, the public health nurse update uh, regarding COVID-19 um, we'll make her um, report part of the um, minutes, uh, and so that I won't I won't read all of it. But um, she just writes down that she had a telemeeting with um, me, and um, uh, regarding best practices for safe working solutions for the schools. Uh, and that was also with uh, the nurse manager for Frontier Regional. Uh, she provided technical assistance and support to Frontier, Frontier Regional School District uh, during the reopening. Uh, she did contact tracing. Um, the Maven case investigation is in three phases. Index case assessment, where you monitor clinical objective, subjective interpretations of the illness. You monitor and you manage the well being of the case, the case being the person who tests positive. Practice cultural diversity, maintain HIPAA, and document the activities of the case. Once again, the case being the person. You also do contact tracing, where you find and contact any individual who has exposure to a confirmed index case. You perform a risk assessment and implement appropriate treatment. And then the third phase is case closure. You get the final outcome, whether they're recovered or deceased. Um, the last confirmed case of a positive COVID-19 for Sunderland was May 7th, mm -hmm. 2020. Total confirmed COVID-19 cases were 10. Total close contact investigations were 13. So those are her, that's the report for uh, September. What, she what? is, uh, we did set up um, a weekly meeting or a weekly call in, I should say, uh, with her and the uh, regional uh, board of health leader, uh, Carolyn Shores, um, because uh, she, she would like to just make sure she gets a weekly update of anything in our in our district, which luckily, knock on wood, is a quick call in of zero um, because she can get the number. But as I was saying to you guys before, um, what we really need behind those numbers is the type of cases. So that Karen, because she's Carolyn is in charge of Frontier Regional. So she needs to get updates from the public health nurses in all of our towns uh, to figure out what to do with Frontier Regional. So that's that. Is, is the MAVEN case, is that just the name of the way they do the investigation? MAVEN that's is the state uh, computer system. Okay. It's, okay. It's that, yeah, that's the, the, um, the clearing house. Okay, okay. Yeah. Okay. And um, both Steve and Cheryl, our public health nurse, has access to them. But it's it's really just, you know, it, it's that's where the, all the, the database. That's the state okay. database. Okay. So that's um, the the, uh, the regulations they follow or the the protocol that they follow 
when they do a case investigation? Yes. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And they, right. And then everything gets entered into that state database, yep. who yep. they've contacted, you know, the names, the phone numbers yep. and everything. Yep. And it's pretty yep. okay. tightly um, regulated because yep. of HIPAA. Yep. Okay. You know. Um, but then the reason they do that is there's one place that, you know, DPH can look at. Right. Right. You know, and... Um, okay, so this next thing, um, local guidelines regarding mask wearing in all town public buildings. I, I asked to have this put on so that we could make one general guideline. And then I had second thoughts. <laughs> um, because I was going to ask to have this tabled I and mean, we can have a discussion, but I don't want to have a vote if it's okay for everybody here. Um, I've spoken with the principal of the school and they just had a vote. I thought I printed it out, but they have a pretty, they've got, they had a vote and it's a, you know, a vote with the union as well as the division, DESE, the Division of Elementary and Secondary Education, put together guidelines for mask wearing in schools. Um, so if we make a guideline that masks must be worn at all times in all public buildings in the town of Sunderland, that will interfere with their policies. And, you know, my, I don't think that our goals as a Board of Health is to uh, override the policies that uh, individual groups make. If the town has, the, if, if the town hall has a policy about mask wearing, if they're at their desks, not walking around without anybody around them and they have a policy where they can take their mask off and they're socially dis they're more than 10 feet you know i mean i i don't want to mess with that policy mm -hmm. um if you know if the police department has a policy if you're in your own office door open or closed or whatever and you're allowed you know you want to take your mask off well, if we make this policy, they're not going to be able to do that. This policy right. says all, you know, and we, the restaurants have their policy. Retail has the state policy. Restaurants have the state policy. This was just for town buildings. We were asked to do this, uh, to be in, um, Cindy, who, um, in conformity with other town i mean it was in conformity with the area was it like the for who, who no i think deerfield initiated um a mask wearing policy and i don't know who they did it in conjunction with yeah i, I um, just don't i don't feel it's i don't feel it's necessary um i think that people have been coming to us pretty regularly asking us a our advice and b to review their policies the library, I got emails today from town administrator regarding their policy about cleaning and shut down if somebody comes in positive. I get, I mean, I, we get, people come to us and ask Steve and ask the Board of Health constantly. So I don't feel that us making a policy like this is necessary and i also feel that it impedes their policies i'm going to put it out to the two of you you know for discussion cindy the policy in the town hall is still closed unless you have an appointment correct yes we're technically closed we're looking at offering um by appointments yeah. we're going to be offering um open hours for tax paying at the end of the month we are opening for uh, early voting as we what's, did. What's the mask policy? So everybody does not have to wear one while they're at their desks or anything like that. Anytime any of us get up and walk out into the common areas or go in another office or anything, we always have a mask on. Same as um, 
answering the doors. We always answer the doors with the masks on and everybody to enter is required to wear a mask. And that's and we've, town hall's policy? Yep. It's not in writing, but we all do it yep. and observe it because we discuss it amongst ourselves. Be, so we be, meet periodically it. to discuss um, how things are going, practices. I sanitize every morning, everything when we go in, all the high touch areas, top to bottom. Um, and then we have alcohol here and there so people can be doing their air. Everybody sanitizes their own areas as well. Now, does the, state, does the state have a statewide policy of masks? Like not, I know. Well, I, York, I think they do, don't they? York, there's, a, there's a statewide policy. If you go into stores, public right. buildings, then yes. you can wear a mask. Yeah. Yes. And, you have and to wear a mask. Massachusetts has that same thing. Yes. Right. Yeah. But and I think that covers it. It's, yeah. This is for employees. See, we can make a tougher policy for employees, for people who work in the buildings. Yeah, but I think like Cindy says, they, you know, they, when, they, when, when the public is present or there's not social distancing, yeah. then they have to have a mask on. Otherwise, yeah. you're just sitting at your desk doing numbers. There's no reason to wear a mask. Which is why I don't want, I don't want to follow Deerfield's guidance and make right. this right. rule. Yeah. But, I don't want to make I, this. Guidance. Yeah, we're all very respectful of each other. And, you know, one of us goes down, the whole town hall is going down. So, you know, yep. we're all very careful about what we do socially and um, respectful of each other's space. And, you know, we've, I, we've been good and just, we've not had any, any issues and we just wear a mask when we need to. And it's just automatic. It comes, it's always in your hand. Or, mine's always in my pocket. It just automatically comes out. Minute I see somebody in the common area, my mask comes out because I know they're coming to my office or whatever. So everybody's really respectful of that. And so have right. all of our customers. I think it's just uh, basically common sense, I think, and, and courtesy to other people. And I think if you did uh, put that mandatory uh, mask on, uh, I think uh, my, my personal feeling on it is if there's people that cannot wear the mask, but they wear a face shield. That really puts uh, uh, dirties the water. You know, you don't well, see no, what I'm I mean, would, Right. No, we there would be there would obviously be allowances for that kind of stuff. But what I'm trying to do is is not to over policy yeah. our our yeah. town so that we are we are hindering the individual policies. I would recommend that the town do a written policy. Mm -hmm. That the town office building have yep. a written policy. Yep. The school has a written policy and you know, I mean, that's just smart, but they that's do have written, it written on the door. With a written policy for each building or each Correct. unit of the government, they should have something that should be in place. Right. We do um, have a I, sign on the door, right. um, allowing people yeah. the information that we're close to the public, we will meet you. Here's all the phone numbers that you want to contact. The, the We have this big mailbox outside now. Folks can just drop stuff in there and it's in the back. We reverse the whole building. Everybody enters from the back of the building because that's where the elevator is for our traffic flow. Then everybody goes out the front door and they go back to their parking spots in the back. And so we've been putting that out there. That information is plastered everywhere, but we don't have an official policy which we certainly could. No, do. I mean an internal policy. Oh yeah. No, that's what I mean. We could yeah. certainly put it on paper, but so, that's our practice that we've done all along. Great. So just to move things along, I would um, vote to, I would, um, it's not a vote. I'm going to ask that we table the guidelines regarding the mask wearing in all town buildings. That's Is fine, that okay with me. everybody? Yep. Great. Yes. Thank you. Um, the legal fees, the Board of Health revolving fund legal fees for July. Um, it looks like $741 was uh, for one, one um, case, which was resolved last month. The 370 Montague Road, the Pond Ridge condos, that right. would be that, that bathroom, that toilet. <laughs> yes. That's a lot of money, $741 for a toilet, but it was resolved, so hopefully we'll never see that again. So that's done. And Bruce, that's an expense that comes out of the Board of Health revolving. Right. Right. So, pay the legal fees for all this right. stuff. 
It was so which we didn't used to have. I'm sorry, Caitlin. We didn't no, used no, to have the, those that's types the of problem. expenses. Yeah. The two things that come out of our expenses are things we can't budget for <laughs> is right. public health nurse and legal fees. Yep. But such is life. I mean, you can budget for it, but it can go either up or down or whatever. That's kind of what I meant. Yep. Yeah, you got it. Didn't didn't my if you do budget for it, then it uh, might go back to to the town because we're not in profit making. You know what you spoke of earlier, right? Right. With our budget. That's when we decide to give ourselves a salary. No, just kidding. <laughs> um, Board of Health GIS layer for septic wells implementation information. Help me out, Cindy. That's me again. Sorry, I didn't write anything up. So we had talked about this for a while. Um, I've been working with the assessor's office of adding layers to the GIS system, which would be all Board of Health information, not all, but property information, septic plans, um, pumping reports, wells, all that sort of thing. And we can and break I it down a little, the GIS system? Yeah, so it's all the property um, information in town is on the GIS system. At the computer? Through the assessor, yep, yeah, through the assessor's office. Okay. It's, base, it's basically what you can go in or used to be able to go in and look at the maps and then look them up in the book. So all of that information is now online. It, it's been online for a while, so it's been really helpful now that we're closed that we don't have a lot of people coming in and expecting the information. So with that system, through no cost to us, we can add layers to that. So, um, and I've been preparing for it for a while now. I've been scanning all the activity that we've been doing as we get reports in and plans and all that sort of thing. So, um, Steve and I had also been talking about how they could get access to that information. So that when they're in the field, they can get it that way on a computer Thus the laptops. So, um, excuse me, when you're talking about layers, are you actually talking about a literal layer? So say you have the plot, you have the person's, you can then a layer and then see their septic. Then a layer, you can then see their well. Kind of, not really. We won't see it that way presented no. right now. I think it okay. may eventually be able to show up on the map. Okay. you'll be able to see all that stuff, just like you can zero in and you can see a house and things like that. Um, right now, what it would do is we could put an address or a, a, a map and lot number and we would find the property. And then there'll be all these selections that'll be available. And some of those could be for Board of Health. We can lock them so that they're private. They don't have to be public records. And um, so our health agents would have the authority to go in there or Board of Health members would have the authority to go in and look at all of those reports. So um, one of the, the stumbles I've had with getting the laptops is getting them all on the system so that they can see my reports in my computer that I'm keeping so we could keep it in a shared folder. But the better option will be to start uploading these onto the GIS system, which is going to be a huge task. But um, I think we can do it. Like I said, there's a lot that aren't in the system yet, but there's a lot that are. I have a huge amount of properties that I've been scanning for about two years. So, so Cindy, basically for a well, it'd give a GIS coordinates of where that well is. Um, yeah, it would, well, it would be the map that we have that was yeah, presented to us upon approval. Yeah, but it would be, yeah. And then, and then they'd have a general area where the septic system is. It wouldn't have the actual design of the septic system. Right. It won't show that on the map per se, but all the records will be there. Yeah, because I, so I, I think it's a good idea for butters and everything else. Yeah. You yeah. know, if you're going to build a house or something, you're going to mm -hmm. be so far from their well, at least right. it, it, it's a record of where the well is instead of someone saying, well, it's over there. Well, you know? and we have that every time a task is, is being asked for. So can you send me the, the plans? Can you send me this? Can you send me that? So this way we can go in there, the health agent can go in there. I'm able to go on my computer records. I have them by property. and I can just email those to whomever, whether it's an installer, the pumper, the owner, whoever. So by putting mm -hmm. them all on the GIS system, it will allow more accessibility amongst ourselves. Yeah. 
eventually yep. it'll, they'll go on the map. So I think the maps are going to, to update the maps to actually show all those layers are going to cost us some money, which we don't have right now, which is fine. Uh, it's not going to cost anything for us to upload all those records onto the GIS system. So if you pick a property, 12 School Street, you should be able to go on there. You'll see the deed. You'll see the CAI, CAI card, which is the, um, the card of graphics who does the mapping and the GIS stuff. You'll see Board of Health, sewer, whatever, you know, is mm -hmm. entailed on there. Yeah. So I think it'll be helpful for us moving forward. And then we'll be able to hopefully get the actual implementation of the information showing right on the map. So, but that's going to take a little extra work. I got to get all the records up there first. So I'll have to work with Steve and see how we want to name the information because it all has to be very uniform for uh, searching purposes. Right, right. So that we got to think sense. of everything that we want on there and how we would look it up. Well, can, can I bring something up to uh, this would be old, 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 very old business? Um, is that, uh, I believe it was a camera that I went to a classes up in Greenfield to be able to do stuff like that, similar to that situation, where you could use it uh, for Board of Health. You did um, a where you, GPS training, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Whatever, is is that being used at all in the, in the town of Sunderland? It, well, it was just to give us some, I mean, I, I, I can use GPS, um, I think we, we sent you to the training. Um, yes, you did. Yeah. And, and to get, the, get the, the equipment, too, to bring it back to the town for the Board of Health. Steve, do you remember getting that equipment, GPS? Um, I remember getting a handheld GPS from the town of Leverett, which I have never used. Um, it, what was it for? It was for something pretty specific. They wanted, was it the GIS stuff? Did they, they it was like a push for. They, they wanted some GIS and they had some grand scheme that we would be able to incorporate handheld GPS into GIS, which basically doesn't work because if even when you have a uh, handheld GPS, it does the GPS satellites plus the Russian system GLONASS the best you get is about a nine foot rev resolution, which if you're standing over a D box, that gives you uh, Nine feet to the right, nine feet to the left. Yeah, that gives you an 18 foot diameter circle and you're never yeah. gonna find it. So, <laughs> uh, so hmm. you know, using a GPS system to locate stuff that, uh, could then be transferred to GIS to be useful uh, is scores of thousands of dollars because you need to set up a what they call a differential GPS system. I'll stop me. I'm getting boring here. It's an it's an automatic correction. Yeah, it it, it corrects off of a stationary GPS, but um, you can get accurate ties. So in other words, the corners of the house don't move. And if you have tape ties from that to the well or from that to the D box, then though that information can be corrected on GIS, you know, and you can get very specific and survey information in. So that at this point would be my recommendation of the approach we should take is, you know, get approximate locations, rely on files of tape ties to components for wells and septic components. And, you know, eventually when some benefactor dies and leaves us millions, we can, we can go for the uh, differential GPS. Because that's who they're going to leave it to, the Board of Health of Sunderland. Well, I talked to Cindy myself, but. Yeah. Hmm. Forget their kids. They're going to leave it to the Board of Health. Yeah, so. Well, thank you. Okay. Yeah, so, so basically, G, handheld GPS, I, I use it for a lot of things in my personal life, but it has, it just doesn't have the accuracy that I need for any kind of work for Board of Health. All right. Well, thank you. You're welcome. Uh, well, thank any, you. Anything else, guys? 
All right, next board of health meeting. Um, I, I know that there's some holiday, Columbus Day, right? That's a Monday. Oh, yep. Indigenous Peoples Day. It's still Columbus Day. Eh, I know, but it, <laughs> my children are learning it's Indigenous Peoples Day. What day is that? What is that, the 19th? That's the 12th. The 12th, okay. My iPhone tells me it's the 12th. My phone doesn't even have it. Really? Mine yeah. has both Columbus Day and Indigenous People Day. It, oh, it says Indigenous Peoples Day? Yeah, it has, it has Columbus Day and Indigenous People Day on the same day. Look at you. Aren't you forward? Yeah, no, mine doesn't even have it. Mine's decided it's giving up. It can't, <laughs> can't do it. Is the um, 19th okay for everybody? Yes, fine with me. I'm going to be celebrating the Indigenous people on the 12th, so apparently. Fine with me. The 19th. Board of Health, 6 p.m., October 19th. Yep. And Gina gets three lashes. I have an event on the 16th, 17th, and 18th, so I, I might not be at that one, but more than likely I'll be able to make it. You gonna be hungover? I'm just kidding. No, 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 just, no, 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 no. <laughs> I might fall asleep though. I got you. Take from the person who doesn't, I don't drink, so. <laughs> All right, let's stop the, oh, uh, does anyone have a motion? Motion we adjourn the meeting? Yes. Uh, second, I second that. All right, uh, three zero. Okay, thank you.